And I've actually studied uh, racial stereotypes in the media and compared it, I actually did a, my master's thesis recently, about a year ago, on comparing uh, media coverage of the Wounded Knee Massacre of 1890 to Wounded Knee cover, or coverage of the Wounded Knee Siege in uh, 1970, I'm gonna mess this all up, 1973. Nice one. Okay. <laughs> and what I found was that uh, stereotypes were, were blatant and, and offensive in 1890, you know, use of terms like red skin and savages, bloodthirsty, when describing uh, Native American tribes back in 1890. Um, a lot of fear of Native people, I think, back then. And, uh, and no Indian reporters to, to counter that fear. You know, there was one. There was one Native reporter who covered the Wounded Knee Massacre of 1890. By comparison, the 1973 siege, there were dozens of Native American reporters who covered that. And very little use of actual uh, offensive terminology. Uh, but where I find the, the, and I wouldn't call it stereotyping, but where I find concern about how uh, Native Americans, and I think minorities in general, are, are covered today by the media is in what kind of stories the media decides to tell. And sometimes, you know, how it, uh, how it decides to tell those stories. <clears throat> One thing I've noticed is, is a general lack of, of minority subjects in stories that have nothing to do with minorities. Um, and that may just be because, you know, we're in Lincoln, Nebraska, and you know, the population of minorities here is, is very small by comparison to, to the non-minority population. But, um, but I think it's also incumbent upon the media to try to seek out other voices for stories that they do. And I don't see those other voices represented enough in, uh, in stories. Um, I also see a focus on, on uh, stories that uh, that sort of, that sort of sensationalize or that, uh, that, uh, that find and seek out images that are, that are kind of, uh, what's the word, I don't know, grandiose maybe? Um, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, newspapers that focus on, and the media that focus on coverage of events like powwows. Rather than looking at, at, at harder news stories that relate to minority people, um, as a native reporter, I've tried to try to combat that um, by writing by writing more in-depth stories about native people and minorities in general. Um, I'm actually working on a story about uh, the Indian Child Welfare Act and uh, and looking at how this will impact tribes. Uh, the Supreme Court's going to hear a case regarding the Indian Child Welfare Act next week, and so I'm writing about how this could affect tribes. But do you want stories about? about minorities, or do you want minorities in regular stories? Both. But, but not just stories about minorities. I mean, in-depth stories that really look at issues that affect minority communities um, and that minority communities care about. Um, and that, that could include you know, profiles of minorities, that sort of thing. I don't see too many profiles of minorities in, in our paper or other papers. Um, so both. No, I, I think Kevin's right. I don't... <clears throat> see the blatant stereotypes that you would see 20, 30, 40, or 100 years ago. You know, in fact, our paper even has a policy. We don't use the word Redskins. We don't use the Cleveland Indians logo. We don't use the North Dakota Fighting Sioux <clears throat> when that nickname was still around. You know, we made a conscious decision and a policy not to put those in. But I think it's a lot more subtle now, and we have to pay attention to suspect descriptions. You know, if we're writing about a crime and the suspect's on the loose, you know, you'll see a lot of, I listen to the radio every morning, the radio news will say, the suspect is a, a black male ages, you know, 25 to 30. And that describes thousands of people and it makes a suspect out of thousands of people. And so we talk about what kind of descriptions we use and if it's not very specific, um, we leave the race out because we don't want to <clears throat> unfairly put scrutiny on hundreds or thousands of people. Um, I think that we do, we have done a good job, or we did a good job in the past of focusing on minority issues. Kevin's done a lot of reporting on Indian issues. 
Um, Kevin did wonderful work on White Clay, Nebraska, which is the small town just south of the Pine Ridge Reservation that sells millions of cans of beer every year to the reservation up there and causes a lot of social problems. Um, our staff is contracted. We have, we're a smaller staff than we used to have. Our staff is not nearly as ethnically diverse as it once was. We once were a leader in the nation for having a ethnically diverse newspaper and newsroom. Um, and as the staff got smaller, that's not, that's not the same anymore. You know, I like to see stories, you know, we call it mainstreaming. You know, we had a, a, a wonderful story in yesterday's paper about a woman who's battling cancer and her pretty courageous struggle, and she just happened to be Indian. You know, we didn't write that story because she was Indian battling, battling cancers, but she's just a member of the community. Um, and I think we need to make more decisions like that of just more accurately reflecting the town that we cover and the community we cover. But I don't see near you know, the, the type of blatant, you know, savage type stereotypes that might have been in the media in the past. Now, oh, go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry. Right. We've been talking about newspaper coverage and, and uh, like TV news coverage, um, I think, in our conversation. But what we haven't talked about is, you know, how minorities are portrayed in the larger media. You know. Uh, magazines and television, you know, broadcast television news, um, and in TV programming and movies. You know, I think that stereotypes do exist in those those mediums. Um, sports, certainly. You know, I think there's blatant stereotyping in sports. Um, you know, I see all those, those these kinds of stereotypes uh, sort of manifest themselves in mascots. You know, like Chief Alinewek and um, you know the Redskins. Logo, you know these kinds of things that, that I find blatantly offensive to Native people, um, but I also see it in in how the mainstream culture sort of appropriates for its own use Native imagery and culture. Um, there's a, there's kind of a glorification of, of Native peoples as living in the past, and not much focus on Native people who are living today, contemporary Native people. So I, I see a lot of costumes around Halloween, you know, people wearing uh, headdresses and buckskin and things like that. Um, those same people wouldn't put on blackface, you know, they wouldn't put on a, an afro, you know, dress up in that way. But it's okay to dress up in, in headdresses and buckskin. So, yeah, I see that, I see that kind of imagery uh, still pretty prevalent in, in pop culture, I guess is how I'd put it. Um, but I think the media's gotten smarter about how it portrays minority people and native people. I'm drawing it <laughs> back right now. I am too, you know, and I actually tried to think about this yesterday. And I just think that news media have gotten a lot better at how they portray minority people. I, I'm sure there's some examples out there, but they're hard to find nowadays. You know, I just think that they've become more savvy about that. You know, I guess the best example I have would be the continued use of suspect descriptions like I talked about when it's, when it's very vague, you know, and if someone robs a quick shop and is described as, you know, black male, age 25 to 30, wearing a red shirt, we would have a hard time as a, news, as a newspaper printing that description because, you know, it's, it's so general. Um, but I hear it a lot on the, you know, local TV and local radio. I think it helps tremendously. You know, I want to be clear that I don't think only Indians can cover Indian issues or only African Americans can cover Af African American issues. But if you have a diverse newsroom, you better reflect the community you're trying to cover. Um, you have people with unique experiences, you have people who know the sensitivities, um, who, have, who have sources. I think, I can't see a, a, any drawback in having a diverse newsroom. I can see nothing but, but positives. Because you have people with whole, a bunch of different backgrounds coming together and they can educate each other, they can help each other out, and they can be a mirror for the community. You know, we have a sizable Asian community in Lincoln and a sizable African-American community in Lincoln 
and I don't think that our newsroom really represents that. Yeah, I think minority journalists, uh, because they care and they know so much about issues affecting their community, um, just naturally gravitate towards stories about minorities. And, uh, and it isn't that, that non-minorities don't care or don't know these things, although maybe they don't know as much about those communities. They don't have the sources that, that I may have in the Indian Native American community here. But it's just that, that minority people just, uh, it's so close to their heart, you know, and then it's so close to my heart. I, I just love writing about Native issues. I, I'm actually the higher education reporter here. And I probably write as much about Native American issues as I do about higher education issues. Um, and I've seen that in, in my friends who are minority journalists all over the country. They do the same thing, you know, they're just very in tune with their communities and, and they reflect that in their coverage. I think that uh, media organizations need to hire more minority reporters. <clears throat> and, that's, uh, and they also need to have more minority supervisors, I think. I mean, that, that's been a problem for, for years. And it'll probably continue to be a problem. I mean, it's, it's the pipeline for minority journalists is, is fairly constricted. Um, and that's partly a problem of, of economics and, uh, you know, ability to, to finish certain levels of education, you know, by no minority communities. I mean, it's just, but it's also, <coughs> I, think, I think it's also an issue of, of um, non-minority supervisors, um, maybe not willing to always take a chance, you know, with, with minority reporters like I think that they should sometimes. Um, so yeah, I think that's the main thing. I think there just needs to be more minority reporters out there. Um, but, but beyond that, I mean, I think it's also very, very important for uh, media companies to educate their non-minority non staff and, and how to cover these issues. And, and try to really embed in them a desire to, to seek out these stories and, and tell them. And I would broaden that a little bit. I think reporters tend to cover who they know and what they know. And if you have a newsroom of mostly non-minority reporters who live in South Lincoln, you tend to get a lot of stories about non-minorities in South Lincoln. And I think newsrooms as a whole, and our newsroom specifically, could do a better job of covering stories that we don't normally cover, going places we don't normally go. And by doing that, we're going to, you know, we're going to meet people whether they're of different skin color or different um, economic status. And but I mean, they are they are the people who make up Lincoln. And after a while, you tend to see some of the same faces in our paper over and over again. Um, and I think we need to get we need to get out more cover stories that we don't yeah, usually cover. And by doing that, we will just better overall reflect Lincoln and tell Lincoln stories. And it's gonna be stories of minorities and stories of poor people and stories of, you know, the non-movers and shakers that generally make the newspaper. I think it's, you know, one of many responsibilities of the media would be to combat racial stereotypes and certainly to not perpetuate them. You know, one of our goals is, is to print accurate information and complex information. And it would be too easy to revert the stereotypes to convey information. I think we need to, you know, if we see problems, hit them head on. That's what a newspaper does. That's what media does, is, you know, we, we write wrongs. And you know whether it's a political scandal or whether it's you know someone spouting racial mistruths. As reporters, we should be addressing that. Yeah, I think all media have a moral responsibility to uh, reflect the, the minority people in their community accurately and uh, and not perpetuate uh, negative stereotypes. Um, but I think there's also a real opportunity here that, that too many media companies are missing. Um, especially at newspapers, uh, readership is declining, you know, at a fairly precipitous rate. And, and I think there's a real opportunity to find 
minority readers and to tell their stories and get them to open up our newspapers. Um, I think the way that we do that is to tell stories that they care about and that, that uh, speak to them. So I think it's uh, really in our best interest as, as media to, uh, to find those stories and tell them.